Hey YouTube, this is for um, my gastric bypass subscribers or those that are just interested in various weights of surgical weight loss. Take a look at the August issue of the Oprah Magazine. There is an article in the Oprah Magazine that's called Beyond Stomach Stapling, What's New and Better. It talks about two to three, possibly four, because I really just skimmed it, other methods of um, surgical weight loss. One is similar to a sewing machine that they put down your throat with an endoscope that gathers up, you know, the lining of the stomach to make it shrink a little bit more. And that's specifically for um, gastric bypass patients. Um, then there's something called an endo barrier that actually covers the first two feet of your intestines. The theory is that it, your food doesn't have all that way to go and so it speeds up your metabolism. Um, it's supposed to work. It says 20% after three months lose weight and 30% after six months um, lose weight. So there's more out there. There's more information out there. Don't limit yourself to just Rue and Y, also known as gastric bypass, or just the lap band. Um, as as technology progresses and as clinical re uh, clinical trials um, continue, there are always always going to be options. And this particular article talks about the less invasive alternatives. And um, it looks like everything that they talk about is actually outpatient surgery. Um, one of the things that the article talks about as well is that um, there are bariatric um, patients who begin to gain weight because their stomachs begin to stretch. Their stomachs don't begin to stretch just because they've eaten the wrong things. It's because they've just eaten anything. Um, that's why uh, right after surgery I could eat one shrimp and now I can maybe eat mm, three or four if I chew them up really well. Your stomach will expand no matter how what you put in it. It's about how much you put in it. So if you're a vegetarian and all you like are carrots, you can stuff your stomach full of carrots until it stretches. Right? So um, they were saying that 50 million people who actually qualify for a bariatric procedure, only 1% actually get it. And it's because of the infection, bleeding, intestinal obstructions. Those are the real risks that a lot of weight loss surgery uh, patients are uh, very aware of, and um, so they really want something that's, you know, less invasive. I don't blame them. I have known uh, of people that have died because of some complication to, to uh, uh, gastric bypass surgery. So it's not something that should be taken lightly. It's not a quick fix just to get you back to that size 6 or that size 10 that you were in high school. It really has more to do with how you live your life and how you take care of your health your welfare, and how you eat after the surgery than before, ever, and, and how you're feeding your body with the uh, right amount of vitamins and nutrients and minerals that it needs. Um, the other statistic that it had in the magazine was that bariatric surgery cures type 2 di diabetes in three out of four patients, high blood pressure in three out of five. So it's not a quick fix. It is not the all-purpose miracle of diabetes and um, high blood pressure that everybody thought. Um, it worked for me. I didn't have type 2 diabetes. I was actually insulin resistant, which is the precursor. But um, it worked for me, but apparently it's not a quick fix for everyone. So educate yourself. Make sure that you are armed with the knowledge that, you know, you've um, researched when you walk into the doctor's office. There are times where doctors are so busy that they don't know what the latest um, surgeries are that are out there. They don't know. But when you arm them with the correct information, they then can go out and seek that information themselves. If it's not a surgery that the doctor doesn't even want to do, go to another physician. Always ask questions. I tell people all the time, ask as many questions as you want to. That's what the doctor is there for. The doctor is not just there to give you a diagnosis, diagnosis, give you medication, they're there for you to inform them as well and educate them as well about your health or about things that you've seen in periodicals, magazines, and other resources. So um, don't take my word for it. 
go out there and research it because the information is out there. Be empowered when you walk into the doctor's office. And um, that's it. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye. One other thing. Um, I just want everyone to know that surgical weight loss is not the only way to lose weight. I'm sure everyone knows that. It's not a quick fix. I am not an advocate that this is the way that everyone should go. Um, I am an advocate of exercise and proper eating. And if you can't, if you see that you can't do it with proper exercise and correct eating um, and, you know, you've already been to the physician and you don't know why that you're not losing the weight and you've been to a dietitian, I mean, I, you really, for me, it really needs to be a last resort situation. It really needs to be a life and death situation. I'm not such an advocate of uh, people doing weight loss surgery for aesthetic reasons. I'm not a real big advocate of that because um, you're taking your life in your hands in a big way. Well, yeah, you're taking your life in your hands if you do plastic surgery or anything else, too. But if you don't have to, don't do it. That's just my perspective. <laughs> I had to because, honestly, if I didn't, I'm not sure if I would be alive or in the health that I am in right now. So just because I'm talking about different surgical procedures for weight loss does not mean that it is the quick fix or that I am promoting it as a quick fix for anyone. There is nothing greater than feeling your best, and that comes with exercise and proper eating as well.